This year's Lifetime Achievement winners are Drs. Terry and Jan Todd, who together and individually made enormous contributions to the world of fitness and strength. They raised the public's understanding of the value of all forms of strength training through their personal lifting accomplishments, their books, numerous articles, and documentary films, as well as all they have done to preserve the history of strength sports. Dr. Terry Todd began as a tennis player, earning a college scholarship to play for UT Austin. In the summer after his high school graduation, he began training and then kept lifting in secret as he also played varsity tennis at UT. Although he was ranked number one on the team by the end of his freshman year, his tennis coach kept telling Terry that lifting would make him muscle bound. And so Terry quit the team in his junior year and focused his energy on competitive weightlifting. Terry won the Junior National Olympic Weightlifting Championship in 1963 and then switched to the new sport of powerlifting, winning the first men's national championships in 1964 and the first senior nationals in 1965. Over the course of his career, he would go on to set 15 world records in powerlifting and was the first to officially squat 700 pounds and to total 1,600, 1,700, 1,800, and 1,900 pounds. Terry was also one of the first people to write about the sport of powerlifting and his insightful, dramatic articles in the Muscle magazines and later Sports Illustrated helped powerlifting develop its unique identity as a sport. In 1978, he also wrote the sport's first book, Inside Powerlifting, and in its introduction, the great powerlifter Larry Pacifico described Terry as an immortal in powerlifting who stands on the elite plateau reserved for legends. He has been, wrote Larry, our guiding light and inspiration since powerlifting began. After finishing his PhD in 1966 with a dissertation on the history of weight training, Terry began teaching as a university professor while continuing to work as a journalist and sports promoter. In addition to his work for Sports Illustrated, Terry served as a broadcaster for both NBC and CBS, was involved in the early days of the World's Strongest Man contest, created and promoted the Strongest Man in Football contest for CBS for three years, and also opened the National Strength Research Center at Auburn University. Terry married Jan in 1973 after meeting her at Mercer University in Macon, Georgia. When Jan began weight training following their marriage, there were no women's powerlifting contests, no women's weightlifting contests, and no women's bodybuilding. However, she was intrigued by strength and with coaching from Terry, decided to see if she could get in the Guinness Book of Records, as those were the only records that existed for women at that time. When Jan deadlifted 394.5 pounds in 1974 and made it into Guinness for the first time, she made that lift and the next several records that followed it only after getting permission to do exhibitions at men's meets, exhibitions that inspired other women to ask for the right to compete. She remained in the Guinness Book for the next 12 years, having set more than 60 world or American records in five body weight classes by the time she retired to begin her PhD studies. She was the first woman to total more than 1,000, 1,100, and 1,200 pounds, and her highest records set back in 1981 were 480 pounds in the deadlift, 545.5 pounds in the squat, and 1,229 pounds in the total. Often called the world's strongest woman in newspapers and magazines like Sports Illustrated and People, Jan also appeared on dozens of television shows during her lifting career, including Johnny Carson's Tonight Show. Welcome, please, Jan Todd. Powerlifting is a relatively new sport. There's only been men's competitions for about the last 15 years. The women's competitions are just getting started. Jan also made significant contributions to the early development of women's powerlifting, writing the first draft of its rules, serving as head of both the American and International Women's Committees, and twice serving as national coach. She was also twice chosen as coach of the USPF men's team making her the first woman to coach a men's team at a world championship in any strength sport. In 1978, Jan also became the first woman to lift the famous Denny Stones in Scotland, a feat no other woman would master for 40 years. In 1983, the Todds moved to Austin, Texas, 
where they began teaching at the University of Texas and began focusing more on encouraging academic interest on the history of the Iron Game. Their work has allowed the study of strongmen, weightlifting, bodybuilding, strength coaching, and other related fitness fields to become part of the academic canon for kinesiology departments and the field of sport history. They began publishing the highly influential academic journal, Iron Game History, the Journal of Physical Culture in 1990. And together they've written more than 600 articles and seven books on strength training and or strength history. Jan Todd, now a full professor at UT Austin, is recognized as one of the most important sports historians in the world and runs a doctoral program focusing on the history of fitness and strength training that she created. The Todd's encyclopedic knowledge of history of the Iron Game also led them to begin making documentary films with Rogue Fitness about early legends like Eugene Sandow and George Hackenschmidt and longer, critically successful films like Stoneland and Fulsticker, which can now be seen on Netflix and other media platforms. Perhaps the Todd's greatest achievement, however, has been establishing the Stark Center for Physical Culture and Sports to hold their vast collection of weight training materials and to make it available to the public. Located in a 30,000 square foot facility in the UT football stadium, the center contains more than 40,000 books nearly every muscle magazine published in the English language, thousands of photographs, rare strongman posters from the turn of the 20th century, antique dumbbells and barbells, and artifacts and personal papers from dozens of important figures in our field, such as Lewis Sire, Warren Lincoln Travis, Joe and Betty Weider, Pudgy Stockton, Eugen Sandow, Bob Hoffman, Tommy Kono, George Jowett, Chris Dickerson, Dr. Bob Goldman, Milo Steenborn, George Hackenschmidt, and many others. And last but certainly not least, in 2002, when Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jim Lorimer asked Terry to create a strongman contest for the Arnold Sports Festival, no one could have foreseen that he would come up with ideas that would totally transform the sport. The Arnold Strongman Classic, Terry envisioned, is the best test of true strength in the world of strongmen, and is widely regarded as the most important contest in the sport. Jan co-directed the event with Terry until his death this past summer, and she took over the reins this year to make sure that the show continues as a fitting legacy to Terry and his vision. We congratulate Drs. Terry and Jan Todd on the lifetime dedicated to success in the world of fitness and strength. We are proud to honor both as the Lifetime Achievement Award recipients of 2019. And join me in congratulating the recipient of this year's Lifetime Achievement Award, Jan Todd, and the award to be presented by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Well, every year we hand out this Arnold Schwarzenegger Lifetime Achievement Award, and we are so happy and so proud to hand it this year to Jan and to Terry Todd. Because as you have seen in that video, there is no one that has done more to promote the sport of powerlifting, weightlifting, bodybuilding, and strongman competition than this couple did. And it is absolutely extraordinary the kind of work that they have done to publicize, to promote it around the world. And so you have been really welcome to our family of the Arnold Achievement Award. Okay, so congratulations for the great work. Thank you. You're actually going to hold that for me? That is awfully nice. It's my pleasure. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you, everybody. Thank you for the kind welcome. Thank you, obviously, to Arnold and Jim and Bob Lorimer for doing this for us. Um, this is obviously 
what I would have to say a somewhat bittersweet moment for me. The honor and pride that I feel tonight is, of course, you know, tempered by the fact that Terry is not here to stand beside me. Um, he should be. I think it would not be wrong to say that the, I think in many ways, kind of a, to me, an extraordinary life that we lived together and the various things that we accomplished, these were almost all inspired by the fact that Terry had what I would always refer to as a rather overactive imagination. Jim Lorimer and I used to talk about the fact that Terry was a visionary, and we would actually sort of joke about that. And as Jim knows, my job, Terry would think up the big ideas, and then my job was generally to come along behind him and kind of figure out how can we make these things work. And this was sometimes not always easy for me because Terry had no shortage of visions. And a lot of time those visions came one after the other after another, sort of like somebody else I know who's kind of standing right behind me here. And all of a sudden we're, we're tackling kind of multiple things simultaneously. Somehow, however, we were lucky in being able to make many of those dreams, many of his dreams, which of course became my dreams, somehow became real. And as those of you know who knew him personally, he was really quite extraordinary. Funny and witty and bright and compassionate. And there was nothing that he loved more than thinking about strength and talking about strength and being around the strongest people in the world. When I married Terry Todd 45 years ago, I could never have imagined a future at that time. This was 1973 in which I would one day be standing on a stage, think about this, I'm standing on a stage with a former Mr. Olympia who has also become the governor of California and now he has become the champion for the environment, for voting rights, and for children. Our world has changed in our lifetimes. And nor could I have imagined that I would live in a world in which women would be able to lift a 165-pound dumbbell over their head, not just once, but twice. And we didn't have one woman do that today on the stage of the Expo Hall. We had two. <laughs> and I certainly could not, at the age of 21, having grown up in the era before Title IX, when weight training was largely shunned by everybody, not just women, and when women like myself went to high schools and universities where we didn't play women's sports pretty much at all, let alone do weightlifting or bodybuilding, nor could I have imagined coming out of that early part of my life that I would one day count among my closest friends those noble giants who just competed on this stage. Men whose strength and courage inspires me to come back here year after year, even though, as you might imagine, most of my academic friends at the University of Texas don't really understand why I do this. But Terry did. Terry loved the fact that Jim Lorimer and Arnold had faith in his judgment and that they had given him a truly rare opportunity to create this unique contest, which we all know as the Arnold Classic. It is probably better to let others say whether this event has truly changed the world of strength, but I would note that if the social media is any indication of things this weekend, and no doubt Snapchatting is helping a little bit with this, it has at least it has at least created considerable excitement and interest in the sport of strongmen. And based on what I'm reading online, a lot of people have been very inspired by what happened here in Columbus. When this part of our life began, and we did our first Arnold Classic in 2002, it obviously, and it wasn't a perfect success, but over the years we tried to live up to the model that Jim and Arnold embraced for themselves. And every year, we tried to find ways to make it better. My aim, as I took on the task of directing the show this year, was to once again try to make the show unique and special 
And I've been very lucky to have had working with me not only Steve Slater as my co-director, and his, of course, incredible stage crew, but all of the judges who have been so loyal to us through the years, and of course, most importantly, a truly incredible couple, Bill and Katie Hinegar of Rogue Fitness, whose dedication to making the, our Strongman event special, and most importantly, for being my sounding board for ideas and events, has literally known no limits this year. I think if you saw it today, the building of the incredible wall, Wheel of Pain, the recreation of the Husafell Stone, did you realize that they actually flew basalt all the way from Iceland so we could carve it and make an exact replica? No one else that I can imagine would have possibly done something so extraordinary for a simple strongman contest, except Rogue and the Hennigers. And I want to just say how very, very grateful I am to them because they have allowed us to do something, I think, quite wonderful. And so in closing, let me just simply say how grateful I am to all of you for this great honor, to Arnold and to Jim and to Bob. And I want to, once again, or maybe I should say one last time, give Cher Terry a chance to have the last words. And I want to close with something that he used to say to me sometimes at the end of a long day, or when we'd had something that maybe wasn't going quite right, and you're sort of looking at each other as you're getting ready to go to bed, and you're wondering, you know, why do we do this? And he would sometimes say to me, you know, it's a good life if you don't weaken. And he never did. And neither should you. And so I thank you again. I am deeply honored. And I hope to see you all again next year.